I know Callie is afraid of the Dobermans, but if you zoom in on the cover, it looks like she's freaked out by the thought of Joe touching her. I'm not your girlfriend, Joe. Argofunk book review, Argofunk book review. This book was written by Stephen Grant. Callie is in California, taking a class on broadcast journalism. She makes a desperate phone call, saying she's in a nasty situation and needs Frank's help. So the Hardys go to help her. They meet Emma Baudry, Callie's aunt and roommate. Emma is a hot California girl, who asks Joe to call her by her first name. It's really creepy that Joe and Emma get flirty with each other. I know he finds a new love interest practically every book, but she is Callie's aunt, and she's at least twice as old as he is. I do not like Joe with the aunt. I do not like this, Stephen Grant. The culprit throws a firebomb in Callie's room. They fight to put out the fire, and of course, Emma is so grateful when Joe saves her. Then Joe gets some alone time with Emma, as Frank has a car chase with the culprit. The culprit tricks Frank into driving his car off a mountain. Frank avoids death by jumping out of the car and grabbing onto a tree branch, but the car rental company doesn't buy his story and they hate him forever. Emma gives them a dazzling smile as she drops them off at Callie's school. They check out Professor Reese, who is not at his office and doesn't get mentioned again. A homeless guy steals Frank's wallet. They give chase, only to be surrounded by a bunch of angry homeless people. The Hardys prepare for a fight. When it's revealed, Callie is now Queen of the Homeless. I'm only half joking, they do whatever she says all the time. It's kind of strange they're so obedient to her commands when she first became homeless two days ago. She explains she wanted to do a report on homeless people, but they wouldn't talk to her unless she became homeless herself. Now they like her, except for Patch. Patch refuses to talk to her. Instead of shrugging it off and moving on with her life, Callie started following Patch all the time. She interrupted a secret meeting between him and a policeman. The policeman shot her camera, and she barely escaped with her life. The culprit traps our heroes in a warehouse and turns on the gas, but the homeless people build a human ladder so the Hardys can break out and save everyone. Frank and Callie have an ongoing fight over whether or not she should be part of the investigation. He thinks it's too dangerous and she should go home. He's got a fair point. Callie has already been shot at and gassed. I don't think a few college credits is worth risking her life. But Callie is an awesome detective who kicks just as much butt as the Hardys do. So she refuses to drop the case. Good for her, but because she's mad at Frank, Callie doesn't tell him she's going to meet Patch tonight at the mall. Oh no, that's a terrible decision! Showing up without backup? Patch pulls out a knife, and he almost stabs her multiple times. She's very lucky to survive the deadly fight against an older, stronger opponent. Meanwhile, Frank and Joe go to the shack where Patch lives. They find newspapers about a bank robbery from ten years ago. The policeman shows up and shoots six times. He misses all six shots, even though the Hardys didn't even try to dodge. So when he shot the camera out of Callie's hands earlier, I guess that was just pure luck. Frank and the cop get into a fight over the gun, and the cop runs away. The next day, our heroes research the bank robbery, and they look at Callie's tape. It turns out the cop is a fake cop in a costume. He and Patch are two bank robbers. Fake cop ran off with the money. Patch finally tracked him down, and is now demanding his fair share. Our heroes get an iffy lead. There's someone at a movie studio who asked about Callie. They decide, aha! Fake cop works at the movie studio. That's how he got a cop costume. That's a bit of a stretch, but we are in Los Angeles. Might as well visit a movie studio. One of the culprits, uh, presumably Patch, traps them in an alley and tries to run them over. Joe escapes by falling down and crawling under the van. Frank and Callie escape by hugging the wall. Strangely, the culprit runs away on foot instead of attacking them a second time while our heroes are disoriented. Every other time in the book, the culprit attacks repeatedly over and over again. You saw that! But this time, the culprit just gives up and walks away. At the movie studio, the Hardys are picked as volunteers for a special effects show. They almost die when the studio's fake gun is replaced with a real gun. They're told that Stuart Bates, the head of the movie studio, specifically chose them for the deadly demonstration. 
It's uh, kind of ridiculous that the head of a movie studio spends his time picking volunteers from tour groups. You'd think he would have better things to do. Patch disguises himself as a ninja and chases Callie through various sets. The Hardys rescue her on a spaceship when Mr. Bates shows up with the security team. Bates is the fake cop, although our heroes pretend not to recognize him. Here's what I don't understand. Why doesn't he recognize them? He shot at all three of them multiple times in the past two days. You'd think he'd know who they are by now! Not to mention, if he didn't recognize the Hardys, then why did he choose them for the special effects show? Anyway, Bates mistakes them for random teenagers. He chews them out for not following the tour group rules. And Frank secretly steals two invitations to a party at Bates' mansion. Frank has a plan, which never gets explained. Step one is making a duplicate tape. When they do this, Pat shows up and chokes Callie. He steals the tape and locks our heroes in an airtight film vault. They escape by triggering a fire alarm. They go to Bates' party. They explore his bedroom. Frank puts the second videotape on Bates' pillow. Again, I wish this plan of Frank's was explained, because I don't see how giving evidence to the culprit is helpful. Bates appears. Callie hides under the bed while Frank hides in the hot tub. They overhear Bates planning to meet Patch tomorrow, when Frank sneezes like an idiot. Frank's in a hot tub. He could easily have ducked under water to soften the sound, but no, he just sneezes and gets caught, so there's a big fight with our heroes and Bates' guards. They knock out all the bad guys, and strangely, they decide to leave. The culprit's unconscious. Now's their big chance to call the police or take some evidence with them. The fake co costume's right there. But no, our heroes leave without a second thought, which is an annoying thing about this book. Whenever the heroes or the villains get into a good position where they could easily end things, they just stop and give up so the story can continue. As the cover shows, when they're leaving, they get attacked by dogs, but they get over the fence in time. They go to the theater where Patch and Bates are meeting, too late, the Hardys realize it's a trap. Bates's goons kidnap them and throw them into a van. That's when Callie's homeless friends show up. They all start shouting, Change! Could you give me some spare change? That distracts the bad guys long enough for our heroes to fight back. So Bates and his guards are knocked out again. He should consider hiring better security guards. They chase after Patch. Patch gives a full confession, unaware that Callie's secretly filming him the whole time. So, they give that evidence to the police, the bad guys are arrested, they get a finder's fee for recovering the stolen money, and Callie gives the money to her uh, homeless friends, which is really nice. Aunt Emma kisses Joe on the cheek. I still think it's creepy that she likes him. The end. Postbook follow-up. This is a surprisingly violent book, especially compared to the previous one. Usually, the Hardys are superheroes who can fight all day and never get a scratch on them. Here, they come super close to dying. Injuries are depicted in a realistic way, including blood. This is a good Callie book. One of the ones where she's so good, it makes you wonder why she's not a permanent member of their detective team. She's more helpful than Chet, that's for sure. The problem is that she spent most of the book fighting with Frank. It makes for good drama, but I was annoyed at both of them. I didn't like how she purposely lied to him and endangered his life just because she was kind of mad at him. I didn't like how he kept trying to kick her off the case, because it's too dangerous for you. If they had worked together the whole time, like in other books, it would have been much better. Overall, this is a solid book. It's definitely more action-heavy than plot-heavy. The plot can be reduced to the culprits try to kill our heroes over and over again, until they get stopped. I give Hardy Boys Case Files number 19, Nightmare in Angel City, an 8 out of 10. Also, that's a great title for the book. It's, it's got a good title, too.